Hi, welcome to Steve's Garage. I'm Steve. This is my garage. Welcome to the final installment, finally building this uh, arcade machine. It's taken me a while, uh, don't look at it. It's not done yet, technically. I finished off part three probably about a year ago. So it's taken me that long. There was a long break in between COVID, life happens. Anyways, I got back to it, finally finished it. The video will show you the final steps to get to this final configuration. Uh, hope you enjoyed. Just a reminder, this is where I was when I left off. I had the cabinet built, the monitor was mounted, speakers were in place, um, didn't have a marquee or anything, needed to be painted, needed to be wired up, control panel needed to be drilled out. Uh, that's what you'll see in this video. All right, ready to get back at her. A uh, few things left to do here. I gotta drill the holes for the control panel. Um, I'd like to put a little back edge on this drawer just so things don't slide out and fall into the cabinet later on. Gotta do a little bit of sanding, a little bit of cleanup. I figure out how I'm going to mount the PC in the back so you know you tip it back, the PC doesn't fall out. I got to work on that. Figure something out uh, how to mount all the other electronics. I think at that point we'll be ready to start painting. Coat of primer, a couple coats of black paint. Planning to put a piece of plexiglass on top of the control surface. Maybe a piece of plexiglass in here is some kind of marquee, some kind of light in the background, color light or something to make it a little bit fancy. Let's get to it. Hello. <clears throat> so, I added the pieces to the drawer, the back thing, and a couple more support pieces. And now I've uh, added all these brackets and whatnot to hold the PC in place. So now, it ain't gonna move. And I think I can even, well, maybe that won't work. I thought I could do this and possibly even take it out without undoing all the things, but let's just leave it in there for now. Um, I think we're good to go with the PC. Uh, this'll hold it nice and solid if I need to move around the cabinet. What's next? Mm. Okay, done some cleanup sanding here and there on the edges and whatnot. Removed the monitor, got the drawer out. I'll paint that separate. I think we're ready to paint the cabinet. Let's get to it. Finish the coat of primer. I'm gonna wait for that to dry. In the meantime, this is the my prototype joystick layout. I'm pretty happy with the spacing of the joystick and the buttons and whatnot. However, in the final setup here, you can see I have a much smaller panel. So I'm gonna to have to squeeze this in a little bit, side to side. It's not too bad. I have to move those in a little bit. And front to back, I need to squeeze a little bit too. So a little bit of adjustment to fit into the new panel, but I think we can do it. Let's give it a shot. So got a coat of primer on the whole box here. Sanded it down nice and smooth, ready for uh, another coat of the black paint. Also control surface, drilled out the holes and uh, Got a coat of primer on there as well. Got all this done and realized I hadn't cut the hole for the marquee up here yet. So I think what I'm gonna do is just cut a hole and figure out what to do here. I'm picturing a piece of plexiglass on the back, a light in the back to, to make it twinkle, something like that. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do there yet, but I do need to cut the hole out. So I'll do that now, prime up the edges, and then uh, we should be ready to paint.
So time has passed. Last time I worked on this, it was uh, August 3rd. I looked up back in the files. Now it's uh, June 6th. I haven't done anything with this. Um, life's gotten in the way. But now, I'm back, baby! I'm back! Hi, George. I'm back, baby! I'm back! <laughs> so the cabinet's all painted black. Uh, I still need to do some decorations on the side. That'll come later. For now, I've got the uh, control panel, all the holes cut out and whatnot. I do want to have where to go. I do want to put a sheet of plexiglass on top of here to help protect the playing surface because there's going to be a lot of hands and banging going on. So I got some plexiglass here. Of course, it's got this blue blue coat just peels off. It protects it. In the meantime, while you work with it. It's a little bit tricky to cut plexiglass without it uh, cracking on you. So what I've done here, here, uh, come on around here, you can see a bit better. Whoa. So you can see the piece of plexiglass, plexiglass is in the middle, sandwiched by two pieces of old, old wood. Um, this way, as I'm cutting with the circular saw, the two pieces of wood stabilize the plexiglass and hopefully it won't uh, crack or shatter on me when I when I cut it. I've cut this end, seemed to go fairly well, and I cut the two long sides in the end and uh, see how that comes along and then we'll sandwich it with the uh, control panel and I'll drill out the holes. Let's see how it goes. Okay, I've cut all four sides. Um, we're ready to unclamp and see what we got. Now, I didn't mention this earlier, but I did cut this at an angle. So hopefully that will match the angle on the control board and fit nicely against the, uh, the screen panel. So these are now scrap pieces of wood. A little bit of a chip. And all you can see that there's a bit of a chip off the corner, but I think I can live with that. Pretty minor. And I cut this edge at an angle to match the angle on here. There we go. So now I can match that up there. What I'll do is I'll clamp a scrap piece of wood on top there, turn around and use this as the template to drill the holes in the plexiglass. Let's give it a shot. All right, drilled all the holes. Let's see what it looks like. Seemed a little bit rough when I was cutting them, but I don't have any other options at this point. Ta -da! Actually, they seem pretty good. Now I just need to cut straight lines here to cut out the hole for the uh, trackball. And then I can uh, mount these two together. I may put another coat of paint on this before I do the final, final setting. Let's get to it. Okay, so I've cut the holes. Gone on here, realized I have a problem. I screwed up. <clears throat> See, all the holes are fine. Track ball is supposed to go there. <clears throat> but these four mounting holes were going to go through the plexiglass. So the plexiglass would just have the four holes and then a middle hole. But I cut too much. So it turns out this was a trial run. I'll do it again. Okay, so I started over, fixed my mistake. This is the old one. This is the new one. Can you see the difference? 
So now, whoop, the trackball will mount just like that. And the hole So the trackball mounts here. Oh, here, I've got to get the wires on the other side. Trackball mounts flush like that. And this will sit on top. Much better. Oh, no, got that backwards or something. There we go. <laughs> Just like that. Beauty, ain't it? Okay, here we go. <clears throat> I've done another coat of paint on there to make sure it's nice, nice and clean. Pulled off the, uh, the blue backing on the back of this. Lay it into place. Seems to fit just nice. Now I get to pull the cover off. Now I think there might be some scratches because this was old. Well, it's not too bad because this is old plexiglass that I got. Can't beat the price. You can see there's some rough chipping around some of these holes. <clears throat> um, I'm not too worried about those because all the buttons have uh, a sort of a flange that should cover that. So I think in the end you won't really notice it. So there's a few little chips and scratches, could have done with sharper drill bit, but I think good enough, because most of this will be, be covered. I'll have to make sure this is cleaned really well before I screw it down and mount all the buttons. Just like so. Should do the trick. Nice. All right, got the plexiglass in place. Now we're going to move all of these controls onto this control panel. Although now that I'm looking at it, I realized I missed a hole. So I'm going to have to add one right here. Hmm. Figure out how that's going to go. Got most of the controls mounted in here and everything seems to be working quite well. I did have a problem with the uh, spinner here. Turns out with the extra thickness of the plexiglass, the, the, this doesn't extend far enough above here. It just, this goes into this little slot there, only about a millimeter. So it's enough that it locates it, but it's not enough for the set screw to work. So I had to do something about this. So I talked to my longtime friend, Michael, yeah, I don't know about a long time friend. Uh, we just met each other a couple months ago. And he decided he was going to help me out. Mechanical designer. Uh, Mike, why don't you take the mask off? We're distanced here. What's the problem? Uh, okay, whatever you say, Steve. 
So Michael volunteered. Vo volunteered? Or, or kind of voluntold. To design me a little fix. He designed this in SolidWorks, 3D printed it. Kind of a top hat looking thing. <clears throat> Got a set screw. This sits down on here. Tighten the set screw. And now the knob here sits properly on top there and there's enough there for this set screw. And we're spinning! Thanks a lot, Michael. Sure, Steve. Anything for a good co-op review. It's a little wobbly. We can do something about that. That's better. Good to go. The other thing you can see I've been doing, trying to put a little bit of artwork on the side here. This is just a whole bunch of tape. If you're ever masking and using tape, don't cheap out on the tape. I'm using frog tape. It's not as, as sticky, but there's more of the glue on the tape. So it does a much better job at uh, preventing the paint from seeping underneath the tape. So really I've just covered this with tape. These are going to be the lines of the path. You got the dots. Still have to put the, uh, the ghost in here and then I'll start doing the painting. A little trick for the painting that I've learned over the years. You put your tape down like this, cut everything out the way you want. First coat, you do the same color as the background. You paint black in along all the edges. If anything's gonna seep underneath the tape, it's the first coat that does that. So if you paint black, anything that seeps under the tape will be black and you won't see it in the end. Then you go back over top of that with the color. In my case, I'm gonna be going over with white a couple of times because it's hard to paint colors over such a dark color. So I'll paint white and then I'll do a few coats of the colors that I want. Um, and then I'll have to do a little bit extra masking for the ghost eyes and whatnot. And then we're good to go. Thanks for stopping by Steve's Garage. Finally done. Took four YouTube videos to go through all the steps to build this puppy. There's a lot of extra detail in there. I thought some people might enjoy seeing all the different steps and uh, exactly what's involved. 
My initial goal was to build this for under $300. Didn't quite make it. The main reason that the, the spinner, really wanted the spinner for certain games and the trackball. Um, I think if you built this with just the basic joysticks, cover like 80% of the games out there, you could easily do it for under 300. Really it's just the uh, couple sheets of wood. Um, you find an old monitor, old PC, rip out some speakers out of some um, old stereo or something. So the, the basic core of the stuff can come for really cheap or even free. And uh, you can build yourself an arcade machine. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. Consider subscribing, follow me on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, if you have any questions or whatever, leave them down below. I'd be happy to answer anything if I can. Steve's garage is now closed. <laughs>